Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new meeting at the pavilion number three, Super Salone. My name is Carlo Passera. I am the coordinator for Identita Golose. Between the brackets, we have here a pavilion where you can taste all the wonderful dishes by our wonderful chefs. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you and have the pleasure to introduce to you one of the masters of our national cuisine, but an icon of Italian cuisine, Mr. Dario Davide Oldani. Welcome. You don't need any introduction, but let's make a few comments about you. Uh, yes, because uh, we've been befriending a few years back two Michelin stars. One is close to here from Cornaredo, where you have your restaurant. Yes, Milan has moved over to this uh, side of the city since Expo onwards. It was a project that I uh, uh, had in mind since I was a kid, and then Milan kept its promise. They created this neighborhood, which is always a pleasure to be in. So two Michelin stars plus a green star. So it's uh, another recognition with my friend Stefano. We keep on talking about sustainability. So yes, we have a green star. We're here with you not only because you're a great um, cook or chef, depending what you prefer and how you prefer to be called. I am a cook, yes. uh, because um, uh, talking to you uh, means also talking about design because there are a few similarities that we can draw. Um, and I uh, quote an article which was uh, published a few years back. David Oldani is not just a chef or a cook. Um, it, it doesn't matter to him to actually work in an environment which is strictly connected to the kitchen environment uh, uh, um, at door, your restaurant. You eat wonderfully well. A feature of Oldani's skills is its strength is uh, to blend a cuisine with other experiences rooted in the deep Milanese province where he was born and grew up. So eating and going hands in hands with a pop idea of cuisine. Um, old cuisine is equals to art uh, as much as pret a porter is or ready to wear um, equals uh, high fashion. It's an evolution of Guerrero Marchesi, your master. You are one of the Marchese's boys, so to say. So the disciples, the students uh, um, taught by Marchese and they changed uh, the concept of high cuisine by introducing new ideas. So not only an isolated idea of cuisine, but also cuisine getting into design and many other um, areas. Um, you come from the province of Milano and uh, when uh, you started your career, this was the land also where all the great uh, Italian designers were born. Do you feel to be the product of what? I am the product of a constant attention of somebody who likes uh, his own job and doesn't like to be put up the wall, so to say. And I don't like to think that, uh, um, you know, uh, cooking as a job ends just when you switch off your heaven in the kitchen and uh, or stove in the kitchen. So I'm very curious uh, in life and my curiosity led me to uh, indeed um, do something to make uh, cuisine easier. We started uh, almost 20 or 18, actually 19 years ago, to design the first classes. So the first pieces were designed uh, with a reason in mind, and uh, therefore uh, practicality was a must day in, day out. We were serving food in the first little trattoria, the first door, uh, on October 23rd, 2003, the year before I started to design objects. But my own vision on design is uh, to have practical, useful uh, objects. And if somebody says that they're also beautiful, it's okay. Uh, but basically what I'm looking for is something that uh, serves the purpose of my job. I was never 
regarded or I never regarded myself as being a design. I have an eye for beautiful things, or at least what I think is beautiful, and beauty can be translated into art, into design, because if you talk about art with cuisine, in my opinion, uh, cuisine is an ephemeral art uh, form. When you eat, you feel uh, according to the way you uh, feel and the chef feels. A more concrete form of art, which is design or sculpture, etc. You have pieces which remain and give you, in my opinion, other feelings. They have a kind of longer uh, life cycle. Well, the um, cuisine is a, a very complex and long art form as well. Besides your creations, besides your restaurant, uh, which you have recently redecorated uh, uh, together with the architect Lissoni, you match beauty with functionality, which is your label. As much as in your dishes, you put together contrasting ingredients so that you can find a new harmony. Yes, what you're saying is exactly in line of the way uh, I feel I am. Uh, the, the way, the, 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 what you see is what you get, really. And in my job is exactly the same thing. Um, we had a uh, project which we developed together with my staff and uh, we worked on it, uh, we fine-tuned it uh, uh, with Piero Lissoni. The only clashing thing is that uh, I am uh, a Milan fan and he is a, an Inter fan, but this was a project uh, that started um, with the idea of being functional and then, you know, uh, Piero with his own a wider vision in his own trade uh, gave us an opportunity. He never imposed anything. I learned from him a lot, a great deal of things, and he never uh, imposed, he was never patronizing, he let me free to do something or create something which could be useful to me and my staff day in, day out. And so this mix of different ideas allowed us to create our new door restaurant where you feel warmth, but at the same time, the concept is less is more. We just have the essential. Uh, why? Because whatever matters to me is uh, cooking food and give a value added to food. And therefore, uh, designing the restaurant, uh, developing projects like uh, um, tables and uh, chairs, uh, and Maurizio Oliva produced them uh, and I designed them. All this helps giving a value added to what I believe and I hope I can do my best. In. So, Do is in San Piero Olmo, a neighborhood of the municipality of Cornaredo, a new venue because the previous one uh, you left uh, some sort of four or five years ago. Uh, it's a kind of a shop window on the main square of this very elegant neighborhood. And all the solutions, the chairs, uh, uh, the tables, etc., which must at a certain height, etc., because they have to be functional and they have to give and, and help giving the best possible experience to your customers. And, you know, you have to go back home and feel good um, before going to sleep and after a dinner, etc. There are a number of mechanisms and ideas that are functional to the experience that you're offering as a star awarded chef. Well, you see, the area is good because up to 18 years ago, uh, it was a neighborhood uh, which was uh, uh, appreciated uh, by the locals and not by the people outside it. And so opening up my restaurant, uh, dough and uh, our way of uh, cooking, etc., provided a further opportunity to those people who uh, may be willing to go around shop for restaurants to discover us as well. And over the past 15 years or so, we realized that cuisine may help us to live better. And uh, um, eating well helps you do better everything. So my own decision to 
um, stay in the countryside and I'm not calling it the outskirts of Milano, was to create a small neighborhood. This is an idea I've always had in mind ever since uh, we opened up New Do restaurant uh, some 15 years ago and uh, we now purchased another little trunk of this square and we are actually redecorating and refurbishing this uh, building because we want a, a lab to be set up, a workshop to be set up on yeasted um, food. And so uh, we will have another building uh, where we will carry out research and development uh, based on seasonal changes. Um, weather uh, is important and climate change touches us a lot. Casola, which is a traditional dish in my area, which used to be eaten on November the 2nd on, on All Saints Day. Now uh, you eat it, uh, you know, at the end of January uh, due to uh, climate change. And so uh, this way of experiencing food is something contemporary, alas. And, uh, you know, having this opportunity of uh, working in this uh, small town is also uh, an, a, a reason to be sustainable. You know that I always uh, keep talking about sustainability and I'm very proud of my Green Star, apart from the climate change, apart from the food that has to be in line with the season to be sustainable. But what is basic to sustainability, I feel, has to do with human beings. You have to be humane. And uh, this very new project that we began with the school and we have created some five years ago, we had the first, mm, uh, uh, the first uh, turn of the um, course now. Uh, this was a state-owned uh, school. This was a school which is now brought into a situation which was completely unexpected. So if you're studying in a state-owned school, you have the dean, the deputy dean, you have uh, teachers who might have some uh, sense of responsibility and therefore devote their time to young people and they can do a lot. This is the fifth year, fifth and last, and therefore it's the first round, of course. But they gave me the chance of actually being with them by changing the teaching uh, curriculum um, because uh, the average, uh, you know, curriculum in a hotel school of hotelry is kind of low profile. So this freedom which we were given at the very beginning uh, was uh, uh, good because I felt uh, we should have begun studying the products, the ingredients, instead of teaching them to cook. So uh, we turned things upside down. First we studied the product uh, the ingredients you make pasta with uh, flour, uh, grains, etc. So the history of all the ingredients and then apply it to research. And so uh, we wanted to have uniforms because we wanted to be democratic in the school. I discovered that by giving uh, uniforms to students, parents uh, got benefit out of it because uh, there is no longer this feeling of having, you know, the best uh, pair of sneakers, uh, a signature uh, a pair of trousers, etc. And this had a fallout in terms of uh, um, budget in the families. Uh, uh, tuition fee is only 140 euro a year, but from the teaching curriculum to the uniform, everything is being set out. Uh, now we have the first uh, few graduates, in, we had them in June, we have 26 uh, new graduates from last year on, we will have more. And in my opinion, uh, human sustainability, the concept of human sustainability will be to support young people. And perhaps we should change also in our job, perhaps from the very top, I would say kind of top down change in terms of timetables, for instance. Well, but actually, usually revolutions, they start from the bottom, not so much from the top. So you, perhaps we need to learn and, uh, and start 
uh, and start a new timetable and make changes from bottom up. Well, and you're really proud. You sound very proud of this project of yours uh, associated to school. But I'd love to go back to the kitchen for a moment, and then we'll switch back again to the design. So top kitchen, it is actually your historical format. And actually, bullet point number two out of your manifesto says a the a kitchen is only the design that should valorize the content and uh, we usually speak through these items say when we are in a cuisine festival or this kind of things so, so perhaps you want to say what pop cuisine is uh, well first of all i i can say that i am exactly the person uh, uh, that can best represent this kind of idea as uh, i've been privileged to receive great education from my family and uh, what i do appreciate is that whatever i do and i enjoy can also be shared by my staff so it's not just a single chef being the most important person in the restaurant but actually everybody around so the whole team of people working for it so pop cuisine is a is now the dna that a that it's part of my dough restaurant um dough has been has been also mentioned in harvard there's been a case history in harvard uh, back in 2014 not so much because of good of because of the good food that we serve but in terms of the approach to work and such approach to work actually let me tell you it comes from the education that i was raised with, with my, by my families uh by mom and dad actually both of them and it is important to say that because that is what it translated into pop cuisine so the way i am the way my people are well the same is is what you will get on the in the dish uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise, you may perhaps be in the person cooking and not being particularly happy about what you're doing. Uh, what I do firmly believe is that after 20, 30 years of doing the same job, you tend to become a kind of a robot. So you, you don't want to be that uh, in a kitchen no, and nowhere else, actually. So the approach that I'd love to go with is, is exactly the same. So it started off while I was raised by my family, eating at home. And when I was speaking to our students, uh, I was introducing a way of cooking, of course, through my approach to cooking. And that comes from actually uh, apply the oracle on, a, on, um, on cooking. And that is actually something that I learned about while I was observing my mother cooking. And my my mom, she's still in a great shape. And I have to say she's always cooked for us. And we would never, we would never hardly ever go to restaurant. So this kind of applied economy uh, that I'm talking about now was associated to seasonal food items, first of all, and something that it had to be accessible. And then it's actually a very easy math. So you just go for seasonal items and 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 actually uh, being but making that part of your let's say key economy in your restaurant so all of this long story to say that the pop cuisine is my way of being our way of being and it means of course to be able to welcome people first and foremost but also being very regular over time never to never to cheat on yourself and never to betray people so you're always loyal to yourself because it's always easy you know you just look at things and look at people or perhaps you're being influenced by the latest instagram comment or perhaps you see that your job is not going so well but the reason why I'm saying this is that, well, it's very easy to change your way, but it's very difficult if you want to be sound and deeply rooted in what you trust. And I'm definitely for this second approach. So being sound, being deeply rooted. Of course, there are many temptations out there, so many opportunities, work offer, money that I'm being offered uh, to do this and that. Well, let me tell you that uh, I was hold on tight to date so being very loyal to the pop cuisine idea and uh, and, uh, and i'm sure it will still evolve somehow but it, it will evolve in a loyal manner so deeply rooted uh, and yes deeply rooted uh, because a uh, because it's not just it is while 
running after your dreams meanwhile. So you mentioned Arbar, the 2014. Uh, back in that year, you had you were super popular because of your menu, 11 euro menu. You you perhaps are, no, well that was back in 2003. Yeah, but he has developed over the over the years uh, through the caramel onion, uh, which is one of your iconic dish. But what if I ask you the the staple, the passepartout. Well, passepartout is a cutlery that I designed back in 2003. And back in 2003, actually, we had opened October. So from April through October, I was, I was there. I, I wanted to open my first restaurant. It was actually a trattoria. And, uh, and it was all about sustainability. Well, the thing is that my kitchen was perhaps one third of this stage, yes, I can confirm, the smallest kitchen ever I've been to. So, and actually the trattoria at the restaurant was even smaller, so it was very, very small. And I remember you had this microwave on the wall. There was no microwave, it was an electric oven. I, I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have been able to fit any microwave. So, and, uh, and there was this stove with, uh, six, uh, with uh, six possibilities, with six cooks. And uh, so I had purchased this stove and I had asked my artisan to actually cut away the gas fed and, uh, and I had, uh, and I had uh, introduced, uh, let's say I had added uh, an oven, a traditional oven, but actually let me say that it was all melting down after a few days, uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't the smartest, the smartest idea. You know, you gain a lot from experience, thank goodness. So, uh, now, I, I, I forgot what I was saying. So, I started with the small kitchen, and you asked me about Passepartout, my, my piece, um, my piece, the, the one that I designed. So, I was supposed to go for sustainability, adjust to the little space I had, and uh, I remember I could welcome 34, uh, 34 covers up to 45. Uh, and uh, so, of course, I didn't want to stress up uh, my staff, nor the machines, uh, and nor, nor the equipment, because of course you, I, I didn't want any piece of the supply chain to get spoiled, because uh, my, my my guests wouldn't have appreciated it. So passepartout meant that I was not supposed to wash as much cutlery in the kitchen, so waste less water, less detergent, less stress in the kitchen overall, and having pieces of cutlery that could actually help uh, uh, help enjoying the food. Well, can you, can you explain on this? Well, it was three pieces. It was a, a knife, a fork, a, and a spoon, of course. And the meaning there, the meaning of passepartout was that a that pieces of cutlery were to um, to be used in any in any um, in any dish in any, in any serving, and uh, he would have done the job throughout the dinner. So he will count down uh, the number of times that you would wash and and so on. So that was my reasoning back then, and it's not by chance uh, that once I was designing the pieces of cutlery. I can tell you that it was 2003, 4, 5, actually many dishes, many plates, sorry, many plates were being organizing according to the type of cutlery so, so that you could actually take advantage of that plate thanks to the cutlery you were associating to. So there's always a reason why when you design. And recently, well, we've, we've just introduced uh, a new knife with Berti. Uh, they are knife manufacturers, and uh, they are perhaps in quality, they're the equivalent of the well-known French brand. Uh, it's a double blade knife, uh, and uh, it, has a, it features two the smooth and the threaded and well it's just been introduced it's been introduced uh, literally today uh, not long ago and then uh, with artemide we've introduced a, a, a lamp um bonta it's called and they attila was here the the young Hungarian boy uh, who's worked with me on some project he's a designer of course his job and we signed it together 
and that lamp is now being used in the restaurant uh, at the end of the dinner so towards the end of the dinner where we do serve uh, some uh, some cookies let's say towards the end of the dinner and we want to provide a kind of a sustainable light because it's being fed the usb fed so uh, energy saving purposes as well are there so with artemide we have undertaken also this new pathway of going for sustainable light and it's always been one of my dreams to actually collaborate with artemide and towards fall and winter actually we're perhaps implementing more ideas on table chairs and so on well this is there's a long list h do h do yeah it's a water tasting uh, because it's a, it's a glass and, uh, and actually san pellegrino is featuring this uh, so you can either taste the water still or sparkling and when you're tasting uh, water there two different two different edges that you can actually you drink your water from and so it's called H2O from the water formulation from the chemical formulation so H2O and actually DO which is the name of my restaurant and, um, and then Perfetta which is a truffle cutter and 80 micron in thickness and that was launched years ago right yes because I, I was very annoyed uh, by cutting a white truffle, which stands out as one of the greatest, beautiful things we have in Italy in terms of quality. And we've never had an object, an item uh, that would actually deliver the added value that white truffle deserves. So I've come up with this fixed blade uh, with the micron I've just mentioned. So you can cut white truffle and the, 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 the thinner the slice, the, the, the better the quality. So, so again, is the two things actually is the design item that is delivering added value to the food. So through this thickness, very, very thin thickness, this is how we do deliver the added value to, to the white truffle as we cut it, as we cut it. We launched this one and a half year ago, and I have to say that it's it, it's really successful. It's fairly successful, and, and no longer you have the problem of the dial to you know to adjust because it gets broken very easily. And uh, I may I may actually carry on with the Verdo collection of glasses. We yeah we were designing that for cartel. These are outdoor plates and uh, they feature different shapes with a fingerprint and uh, there's a playful fingerprint which is funny because in the kitchen when you are let's say pulling out the plates you're touching them and the chef is always let's say cleaning the fingerprint so in an ironic way let's say uh, i have created the fingerprint myself so you can actually grab fetch literally the dish through the fingerprint so this is really full identity, so to say. It's a full identity concept. And uh, in the kitchen, you know, also at home, you sometimes see the fingerprints, etc. So to avoid uh, uh, sweeping them, etc., Cartel produced it with my fingerprint. Um, when do you think you got this sparkle and the passion for the world of design? Is there an event, an episode, or something? Oh, this passport too was produced because we didn't want to have stress in the kitchen while working, etc. So it was really based upon functionality. Um, it's basic creativity, which may and may not be unborn, inborn. Well, what I like is to give people what I would like to get if I were to go and um, have a meal in a restaurant. So whatever we think about, uh, you, uh, there's other people, Alessandro, Emanuele, Davide, your traditional uh, staff uh, and cooperators, collaborators, but um, all the people who were with me and worked with me um, had different experiences. Alessandro joined me not 18 years ago. He went, but when I saw that he was absolutely outstanding, he went to Ducasse, De Broche, Trois d'Or, and then he came back. So. What I like is investing in 
young, into young people uh, and be very outspoken. I want to be free. They want to be free so that uh, if I sent him out to, to work elsewhere, uh, then uh, came out to be useful because he came back, but he could have been around in the world like many other of my boys, you know, then decided to go away. But this uh, always allowed us to, uh, so to say, uh, get away from the idea of having to always say, yes, chef, you know. Today is September, people are back from summer holidays. What can we expect to get a door at your restaurant? Uh, and I was asked whether I had uh, videos to show and I didn't bring any with me, but uh, in our new door, there will be eight uh, design pieces which are absolutely outstandingly beautiful. They really suck. Sorry for um, saying so, but uh, these are for the uh, autumn winter menu of the door. Uh, the project is absolutely outstanding. We worked uh, with the school Polo Formativo a Solenio in, in the region here. Francesco uses these uh, machines with uh, numeric control. And uh, I was lucky because I was in the jur jury for a design competition, met with Francesco. We started to uh, work with this school, we designed the pieces, which was my big dream, and then they produced them, of course, small, small volumes, uh, but uh, they work on the idea which I had uh, so that you can use the pieces on the table. And uh, this project I have with uh, the school Polo Formativo is something that I treasure because it's another way of working with young people. And you, Carlo, should know, given that you belong to my world, uh, many young people who are not continuing on uh, working in the kitchen because it's rather complex, etc., they become carpenters. Uh, numbers handy, uh, I can prove it. They switch on becoming carpenters. So I, I love to see this manual skills being developed. Uh, and so uh, uh, we uh, will become at the end of September for the autumn and winter season. We have this piece where you that you can use it for the aperitif, which we did without the, the guy I was mentioned before. And we have a, a dish for the souffle, and uh, we have a very fine uh, layer of wood, which is an incredible uh, technique. And all this is going to be our new pieces. You have to bear in mind that in my restaurant, uh, the door, we um, indeed have 40% of new uh, menu holder, um, you have dishes, you have wooden um, objects, uh, and uh, also China, we launched a line called Azioni. And these were all pieces which we have designed uh, shortly before the pandemic. So now we're beginning to launch uh, th this new line, which is called Azioni. So, uh, 40, 45 percent of the containers at that door are brand new and change for each menu and for each season. Uh, this is a project which is starting uh, beginning in autumn, so starting from uh, September 26th, not 21st, of course. Uh, I'm going to uh, steal uh, these comments from you because I want to have a, a uh, the chance of uh, writing about it uh, before all the others. Well, look, you know, these young people are putting passion into these machines with uh, numeric control, but Francesco is very good. He uh, knows how to use uh, tools to be able to uh, work, wood, sand it, etc. And uh, you, you know, I'm really. I'm really so uh, happy to see him so passionate. And as Solenio, this call is something you should watch on because it's interesting. 
it's wonderful. You keep on uh, mentioning uh, the Astolenio School, the Olmo School, the link that you create between your workshop, your restaurant, uh, and the school is almost dating back to our uh, Renaissance. Well, we're, we're coming from, from the Renaissance. We're not inventing anything new. We're just elaborating on that. Are you going to be talking about some new dish, some new recipe in your menu? Would you feel like saying something about that? Well, it's very difficult to talk about the way we uh, cook food. Uh, the new menu has to do with uh, uh, the season. And so from the end of September, we shall uh, make use of onions uh, uh, and uh, how many how many caramel uh, onions did you have you sold uh, some tens of thousands but I can give you the number I can give you the exact number on average is the ninety percent of the people who come in eat the caramel um, onion so we have a new a version of it, a gentler version. And then I was talking about the menu. We will have pumpkin, uh, mushrooms, and uh, parmesan, etc. And whatever you find in autumn, in the fall. And then there is an absolute novelty. We began on June 4th uh, last year when we reopened after the lockdown period. We're going to have just two menu. Uh, ex precision and harmony. And then uh, there is another menu called multiplicity, which is slightly uh, richer. Uh, and that's the only thing that we will do. I'm sorry to say no, but we are not going to have a menu a la carte. Uh, it's another experience. Um, it's based upon your ideas and your concepts, which indeed help people get more your vision of things. Yeah, you know, people will see the way we are, the way we are true to ourselves. And uh, then, you know, when it comes to trust, uh, you have to be able to um, earn it, so to say. Uh, people never criticized our menu also because if your menu is no good, people will never come back. And this is not good for us. So we will have these three menus, uh, Exatezza, Multiplicity, Chita and Armonia, they come from Calvino's uh, books and ideas um, and uh, the American lectures he delivered at Harvard. Uh, one of our clients, after he came to know about Harvard, uh, brought us this book. I read this book and we got an inspiration. Harmony for us is really the brand new menu is that that precision is tradition and multiplicity is the sum of both. And uh, it's a chef free writing, uh, pinching here and there. Okay, well, I, uh, whilst I am waiting for questions, if any, so it will be, uh, meanwhile, I would like to remind everybody you're going to be guest at Identita Golose Sunday, 3.30 p.m. You will be on stage as a speaker with Bocconi Dean, and you will actually be talking uh, through university and not only. And uh, and actually, I'd love to ask you also the, the the meaning of this very picture here that I'm displaying to the benefit of the viewers. Uh, well, yes, I've been really, really lucky that I could take this picture, and uh, I've. So this is why I posted this picture myself with the Inter Milan uh, jersey colors and the new logo, the new logo, uh, which I honestly happen to like. And uh, the new championship. And uh, so actually none of the players who won the last championship are still there. And this is great news. And it's been very nice. We enjoy that. You see, you see, when you're really hungry, these nine players who are still there, they are very hungry. They're still super proud. And sorry, if I was opening this bracket on soccer. So are there any questions at all from the audience? So what will you be talking to in Identita Golose on 26? I will be talking 
to ripresa lenta, slow recovery, we're actually going to be cooking snails. Okay? Uh, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. And uh, so we'll be, well, we'll be cooking, so snails dish, snail-based dish, and then we'll be talking with the dean. Uh, he is going to be on stage with me, and we're going to be tackling topics, uh, current topics. So we're actually now having this slow recovery, and uh, in a broad sense, of course, and we may perhaps env envisage the both of us a uh, back to future around the corner. And also we'll be talking through what Bocorn is currently doing uh, in terms of uh, food and beverage classes that are being provided to students. And uh, well, that's it. And I don't know whether if you're attending, then you will enjoy it. I will be, I will be talking a lot uh, about school uh, same as I did today, because I, I do like talking to schools. And of course, because the Dean from Bocconi is going to be there, then uh, he, he'll be talking through that as well. Uh, we'll be talking through craftsmanship and serious people, grounded people. Yeah, I will be there as I will be working there on that event. I, and uh, so it, it's nice. So we're going to be talking through schools, work. And as we said earlier, you also pay attention to sustainability and uh, you have uh, anticipated through your research uh, some of the topics that have been recently raised um, this past summer because, because actually there's a short of staff that, that many of, the, of your colleagues are complaining about. Yeah, we're absolutely understaffed. We're absolutely short of staff. And I have actually learned this word, which is being used in, in Italy, sottostaffati, which perhaps comes from the English uh, understaffed. Uh, and because the staff is people. And, you know, I don't like to say sottostaffati, also because the word staff, staffa, in Italian, it actually reminds of an object. Uh, so it doesn't speak people so but let me say something about this i was in venice a few days ago well two days ago and the hotel i was there well they were complaining um, about being understaffed so short of staff and um, and, and i was i was feeling anxious uh, uh, because he was complaining about this and i understand there's and there's anxiety that is being raised when when you feel under understaffed um but yes, I, I agree that this short of staff is uh, something that uh, we're, many of us are now suffering from. And I understand it raises anxiety. Uh, but the thing is that uh, we are now allowing people, you know, to be able to survive on oh, this uh, minimum amount of money, kind of a, a, a benefit amount that is being provided to people who are out of work and perhaps some people are not seeking for a job because they're being supported by the state through this uh, kind of a social security uh, extra buffer. So I, it, this is why I don't particularly like this definition of being understaffed. Um, but I understand it is a problem. So um, apparently there are less and less people who want to work in a in cuisine. So unless there are any further questions, well, thank you so much, Davide. Thank you so much. Thank you for your friendship. So whether we're going to be understaffed or not, we're going to be meeting again in Identità Golose in some 20 days time or so Well, Well, it's going to be on the 26th. And thank you all. Thank you all for being there. Good night, everyone.